Hello! Well, I finally did a second playthrough for Joker no Kuni no Alice, that game. Finished the stay location route for Grays and built a guide for you to play that I pinned to my Discord server. It's in the Gen Chat announcement channel. It's a part of the top categories. You just search pins by tapping the people icon on the right hand top side uh, in this channel mentioned there in the Discord server. It will take you to the beginning of Gray's route guide and translated materials. Sometimes though, it shoots you to just above the actual entry point on those messages. Um, but it is thousands upon thousands of pages archived now. So just scroll down a little bit and load more as you're reading from there when it comes up. I summarized the beginning, the first uh, five to six CG scenes and started translating screenshots of each page, which is each tap to move forward on the PSP. Uh, that's for Gray's route this game, after activating the circus sacks for the first time because that's what Nightmare's route skipped entirely and led to a death scene. Um, without that sequence happening the whole game in his, I decided to do this run. Nightmare's route is completed past where the videos end on YouTube. It's actually in the bottom of the Discord server, so not the top where Grays is, but at the bottom. Still under public channels there, it's leading up to a death end that route by the circus troop during their circus's exit. That was without activating the circus prison scenes the whole time, since I ignored given prompts while I was figuring out how to play that run through. So basically, the first two hours of prologue opening event stories were the same as Nightmare's route on Grays, since I was starting with the Clover Tower as my stay territory again. And it has a complete guide for any responsibility questions that came up during the first two hours. And I also explain the lore of the world, as well as other um, Alice games that happened beforehand, where it is relevant to whatever's going on in Grays at the time. So I translated everything screenshot by screenshot until we got the best end for Gray. This is my second go around in the game. And the only interesting thing was the Living Art Museum that triggered for Gray's Route just before the circus started. So I summarized that for you. Um, for the first two season activated event scenes, you can get with your guy, which I included the best CGs added in. And otherwise it was just a few jealousy event short scenes beforehand with Julius and then Gray going around interacting with Nightmare and Alice while usually making them drinks. It was a little boring. <laughs> There was a scene twice or so tied together of raising for a short time with Alice, the rescued migratory board, um, the migratory board that she picked up because he's got a thing for small animals. And so she picked up this bird and that's what triggered the other few times besides this art museum CG scenes in Hatteras Territory Autumn. So that was all skipped when I was playing the beginning and only summarized for you for Gray's Route. Those were fairly boring again, and they just came up with one to three hearts completed, so they're the first things that you see that are different, um, the Nightmares route. From there, though, uh, the first thing to use is Nightmares route for the beginning of the game's prologue with the Clover Tower, and then read the other guide translating material for Grey that I mentioned above. The access is within the Discord channel that I mentioned, um, so that way you know what you can skip to play yourself. Besides the beginning, that's in video form for Nightmares playthrough. So basically, you're just translating any route scenes that come up for a new guy if it isn't gray at that point. And if you want to skip translating yourself about half the game, because a lot repeated, if you're able to trigger it all through your playthrough um, on a full run, then follow the vids on Nightmare and then switch to Gray's guide the translated material beforehand before playing so you know what's repeated and what's not. Anything that's repeating, you can comfortably skip to grab as many guys as possible. I just recommend paying attention to your chosen guy and not tapping for a visit anywhere else the whole entire game. It triggered everything on its own with prompts and scenes coming up or through short visits with them as scenario scenes between the big event CG scenes. And anything tied to tower events or circus prison acts, with exception to where your guys' scenes are attached, are completely skippable. Since it's going to happen that way every route you attempt from Clover Tower, I recommend doing the skip option. Again, skip, because it's going to take over 125 hours to play this game otherwise. Only difference, I believe, is the non-stay routes are probably required to be in the non-stay location season for your guy. 
So the correct season to see them, and you can only change back to Winter Clover Tower season for Alice, where she's staying, or another season for activated season CG event stories when prompted. It'll happen within the actual scene and your guide that you chose for a route. So they'll actually tell you themselves where to go or Alice will mention it, and then you just need to follow that command. It literally tells you during them what to change to. So translate only those new scenes for your route stuff, and you can get through really fast. Second time, I only had to pay attention to questions that came up, so my second run through. And the first few hours, the only one that does the whole prologue until it's over is literally just before the opening movie. It's when you first see Joker's Forest after visiting for the first time all the other territories during their new season. You just go one time, go to the forest last, and you can have skipped everything else or the rest to just before the opening movie when you reach the forest. Because the Joker only asks if you liked him, his seasons, which I said yes to the first time um, in this playthrough. And then I left what I chose each time to avoid the rest of the responsibility questions accrued points in my guide. Because that's going to give you a bad end if you accrue too many of those. And I played it blog style for you. I went page by page in my second playthrough, sending translated screenshots each time you tap in. And so that's in Discord for... Gray's route once we hit the Circus Act 1. It's fully translated. You do need to translate your guys' CG scenes fully after opening the move. well, after the opening movie, because that's when you start a route, but can skip activated scenes that repeat on all routes. Usually your guys' CG scenes play attached to those repeats, so you're going to have to notice when that comes up. On a visit to either your guy or after visiting the Circus, prison to activate acts there. Um, those scenes are prompted for you, so you know when you're supposed to go. Those scenes are either, the ones that you skip, are either without him or with him as a part of the Clover Tower group. And you can skip if you're staying in winter for your stay location, those repeated scenes. Only visit the circus whole game when it is prompting you to change seasons or it talks about going out in short repeat visit scenarios while stalking your guy exclusively the rest of the time. Just by you stalking only your chosen guy throughout the game, it will trigger everything. No visits elsewhere. The other guys will be there if relevant for a shared rival friend scene without visiting them, unlike the other games in this series, because you have to stalk both if you want them in the other games. But this, you literally just visit your guy exclusively, unless prompted to go to the circus, in which case it will automatically roll uh, the CG scene once you hit it instead of asking you to change the seasons or offering a conversation there. Um, you'll just immediately be in a scene. The only time it doesn't do that is when you're prompted to go and change the, scene your, or the season yourself. And so you have to go through the normal run with Joker to be able to do that, and then that'll move you forward in the game. This is talking about their route CG scenes and not just a stay location in winter tide event, or a stay location or winter tide event where it will just be repainted with all of them as you play or included the same no matter what route you choose from Clover Tower. The rest are repeats like explain in Gray's translated route guide I made and completely skippable if you read Gray's first and Discord, except where it asked a question for hearts during short visits with your guy. Um, also, sometimes Joker or the Tower group asks you stuff about what happened in a circus prison act afterwards. And that's the responsibility questions whenever it comes up. So make sure to only answer positive towards Joker the first two times. And then neutral or against him from there. Except when it offers something positive towards activities that your guy likes. Who will tell you that in the visits. That's why I said only translate the new scenes that you see. Um, and then you'll pick what he likes as an option for your answer there instead. It avoids death ends when you answer the questions properly and moves you forward for more scenes triggered automatically with your guy, the circus, prison, and event stories as well. Elsewise, you're going to not hit what's important and probably will die in a scary end like my first playthrough did with Nightmares. Um, we barely avoid it happening again with Grays. We fight Joker's tricks like three to four times in almost what looks like a final battle, and then it just continues. <laughs> Actually, on Gray's route before, finally, finally, we got his best end scenes played. I left what I put up for those questions, the responsibility questions that I mentioned and keep mentioning, to avoid a death end. 
As for Gray's route, you can fully read it starting the first act triggered in there for the circus. Just beginning was skipped by me and server there, and because most important parts were in nightmares, um, just five to six CG scenes played the first few hearts that I skipped. And the questions get harder as you play, so the beginning was easy except responsibility questions. All CDs are grabbed except for the beginning where I did that skip and server for Gray's blog entries, and so I'll give you some of the uh, best CGs right now. There was actually a lot. I took a lot of them. So here's one of the first times we see the Joker in the actual game. Forgive me, it's on my PSP. And then here's in the auditorium when she's sitting with the rest of the tower group. This is what I mean by group uh, images with them in it. So you can skip all of this stuff because it's just going to repeat the same exact way every time. This is them again. This is where he stops you afterwards when you get lost the first time. Again, these are like repeat scenes and you can skip them. This is a route scene because it's got gray exclusively in it and it's separate from there, but it's actually tied to it. So it'll just play into this afterwards. And you're gonna have to pay attention to that. Again, they change it a lot. So I'm just gonna go through it. This is what you'll see when the circus is actually going on. She reminisces about this later with Nightmare. Um, appearing in a dream right after to talk to her about stuff that happened and how she feels about it. It looked really cool. I was pretty impressed. Another scene where she's playing the Joker and he's like teasing her maliciously. <laughs> this is where she meets the circus kids which are evil. They kill you in different endings, and I got one of them in Nightmares Route when I switched to playing for, like, Joker's Hearts, um, in that one. I ended up dying by his troop after he, like, just took off without us and without them. He left them behind to clean up, and they just, like, yeah. So, be careful with those responsibility questions. They matter. And these kids are evil. They're scary. They're garbage. They're, like, actual prisoners that, like, are just transformed to look like circus performers, and usually they're in a toy form. So you'll see that in these images. And that's them, actually, uh, in their prison form. There's them trying to see if they should haul her off to prison. They actually ask him if they should grab her because she's a bad girl or whatever, thinking that she would be a prisoner like them. And then they get mad when he tells them no. So that's, like, kind of when they start targeting you. Here's one of the scenes when you first come into the forest before it changes to the prison. Here's the prison. There you go. Some of the images are vertical and then other ones are horizontal, so. Ah! <laughs> one second. And then here's another one where he stops her again. This is where you see what they actually look like, so that's them. And the stuffed animal forms are usually really beat up because the prison warden, like, kicks them around and stuff. Um, they're not, like, regular, like extras in Wonderland, they're literally like removed from time and like placed into the prison after they do something terrible, like irredeemable. And here he is messing with them. She doesn't even know that they're like literally the performers just transformed into toys. That's why it's like pretty malicious and he's implying that she's going to become one of them. Here's them fighting. They do this a lot. Gray and Julius and them. Especially while they're talking about what's going to happen with the Winter Festival, because that's their, like, stay location events. Here's Gray trying to build, like, a statue, and he's really, really bad at it. Him and his cooking, as well as, like, anything that uses his hands. He's not very dexterous, unless it's, like, you know, with his knives and whatnot while he's fighting. Here's her, like, kind of trying to struggle to tell him that it's okay. Still trying. Yeah, going on for a while. Here's another one. This is the spring location that we, like, triggered an event for. And it was where she finds out about Gray's background. And, like, also Ace comes forward and is kind of mad that she, like, left Julius for Gray. Because that's kind of the premise. That she got booted out of Clover's, uh, or booted into Clover after staying with Julius at the clock tower. <clears throat> and so, like... He comforted her, and Clover is the background for this game, and now he's trying to date her. And then Ace got mad because he's like, hey, you should have given her back to Julius now that he's back in this game, because you can date Julius in this game. There he is still fighting him. And then finally, like, Vivaldi just, like, shoots at him. She's like, 
get off it. Like, just go away. Me and Alice are going to go hang out. She's awesome. Here's another scene, because it plays about two times for each location um, that it points you to go to for a seasonal event. So you change it to that season for just that period. You visit Grey until it triggers. Then it plays, and then it's two times for each season is what I found out. And we did all of them in this playthrough, so you can see it all. It's translated fully. Here's him afterwards, like, being like, hey, I know I'm a bad person because I used to be an assassin. And he, like, basically, like, puts the moves on her, and it was really amazing. I got a lot of kiss CGs in his freaking route. It was amazing. Yeah. He's got an amazing voice, too, if you choose to do his route. He's got an amazing voice. Oh, so cool. <laughs> like I said, they do a lot of them. <laughs> It's so awesome. Anyway, you see them a lot hanging out with Nightmare while you're, like, talking with them while they're working. And Nightmare, of course, is trying to boast. Give me one second. I'm going to flip it around. Here's this right here. Another one where you're with him in the office. Another one where you're with them in the office. But this time they've moved, and they're trying to, like, get Julius to come with them because he's attached to Clover Tower during this game. Like, they kind of share, like, a space, even though one's the Clock Tower Master and the other one's the Clover Tower Master. They're not supposed to be in the same place at the same time, but the Joker made it possible when he came through with the seasons. And Grey, of course, is holding all of his small animals that he's obsessed with, and you can see them flying in the background, and they made a mess of Julius's, you know, Clock Tower room where he's repairing things. And then one second, I'm going to bring you some more. Here's the prison scenes again. This time it was really creepy because you can see them, like, following her in their prison forms. It gets really scary after this. Like, the game is really, really dark. And you can see they're trying to crawl on her and stuff. The Joker actually comes in here and actually saves her, the prison worn one, who's a lot different from the circus captain, who's far more malicious and sadistic. Here she's talking to one of the prisoners afterwards, one of those evil kids that try to kill you all the time. Scary. She's like, hey, look, I have a new replacement for my friend, and it's this, like, tin doll that she hands her. And Alice still doesn't realize, but she's starting to realize, and she's getting scared that, um, that these are actually the performers in their prison form. Because she's been there a few times. She noticed, like, stuff was odd. And she's, like, touching it and stuff, and she's like, oh, well, I guess they, like, replacements here, too. Here's the Joker, the prison warden one, actually, who's, like, talking to her pretty much for the first time in, like, his separate form outside of the mask. They use the mask to, like, communicate with each other when they're not there physically. So he'll talk through the mask when he's at the, when she's at the circus, and then um, sometimes the captain, like, comes through, but I don't think he's ever done it in there. Here he was trying to, like, show that he was a domain holder, and she questioned it, and so he called up his representatives, which are, like, after images, but they're far more scary than what Julius has in Anniversary, the first game. Here's where she sees her sister for the first time through the bars. But it's really just an illusion of her own guilt being, like, pulled out by the Joker to trap her in misery there, so she'll lock herself into his prison on her own. He kicks her out the first few times. Like, it happens so many times. That's why I say all those scenes are, like, repeatable. If you read it, then you can just skip it throughout the game. Because this stuff doesn't change. This was where she woke up. So every time she wakes up, she's in a more and more compromising position throughout the game. Like, about to be killed by these circus kids. It's really scary. This first time was kind of innocuous, but then, like, later on... See, the Joker came to kick her out. He's like, hey, you can't be watching practice. But this was after she woke up from, like, the prison and ended up just randomly in the middle of their practice tent. Here he is on the stage again. Here's where the Joker uh, switches places kind of, and you see like in the background that he's at the prison in the same like pose. This keeps happening. It superimposes itself backwards and forwards, reversing the image while she's there in the auditorium watching the circus. It was really cool, but also scary. Here's where she is in the auditorium again. They're clapping after one of the scenes. They talk a lot as a group, and these are still things that you can skip because they'll play each time. It's just like a stay-at-home location, but with the circus uh, added in and some prison scenes. He always finds her when she gets lost afterwards, and then that's when the scary stuff happens. And then she wakes up from it, and she's usually found by, like, Grey, the further in the route you are. 
So they'll have some scenes, and this is the kind of stuff that you do have to pay attention to because <clears throat> this is like where it attaches your guys, like exclusive scenes, to the repeats. Oh, well, this is one of them. It reminds her of the migratory board, uh, bird when she sees the small animals that the, the candy seller made with his candy. Here's one of the scenes where she's talking to or about to talk to Nightmare in the dream afterwards. Yeah, he comes and talks to her, and sometimes responsibility questions come up here. This is where he's going to fight the Joker for the first time, and then, yes, everything is translated for Grey's Route. After that first, like, circus act, I did it in full. So it's all the way to his best end and all the way through all the fights and everything. This was really interesting. She, he really showed what a badass he was in front of Alice. It was pretty amazing. Here, I'll fix this one. And you can see where he stole his, like, pipe or whatever it is that Nightmare smokes. He's supposed to be the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland. That's his role. And he pointed it at his eyes, so he was threatening him. And then Alice jumped in and, like, actually defended him. One second. Nightmare got mad at this point because the Joker was threatening her and then him at the same time. And so he's like, this is my domain. So he kicks his butt at that point. And they start fighting over her at that point. And this is where he gets really, really mad. And then the Joker literally gets beaten up by him. <sighs> My phone. It was pretty rough trying to get this in there. <laughs> I had to take it from different angles. But this stuff is all in there. So you can actually see it if you wanted to. I'm just going to go on ahead and like move it. So... Here's another uh, stay location event. They all come to visit, basically, all of her friends. She invites them for, like, a kotatsu party. So they're all just hanging out doing that. Ace, when he first shows up, is like, hey, you told me to take off my jacket. So he starts, like, trying to strip, and then Vivaldi gets really angry. She's like, I just wanted you to take off your jacket so you were cold because you were making fun of me, basically. Yeah, it was really hilarious. And then everyone keeps asking, was like, why are you doing that? So they're all like, what are you doing? Stop removing that. <laughs> and then even Gray was like, stop removing that. <laughs> and then they all are in there for the Kotatsu party and they have like snacks and stuff on the table. And then Vivaldi starts like, you know, trying to get close to Alice to avoid like hanging out with the men. And then Boris showed up. It was really shocking because I didn't expect to see him, but apparently he was invited by Alice to make the party complete as one of her best friends. And then Vivaldi is obsessed with him. So, like, whenever, like, he's around and Vivaldi's there, she always tries to feed him and she carries, like, cat food on her and stuff like that because she just likes cats a lot. Like, she has a lot of Nico love. You can see how many CGs change all the time. <laughs> Gray. I still can't believe this was rated like Sarah B, which is like R12. Because he gets jealous over everything. Like, you end up in a lot of these scenes. This is where he was jealous at like the summer location for the amusement park. It was pretty interesting. We got to see shirtless Gray for the first time, even though it's only like, you know, the very, very top half while he's like wearing swimsuits and stuff and wandering around. Everybody was like, basically like stopping in awe because he's like pretty and Alice was like getting jealous at the same time so they were jealous of each other because Alice gets grabbed later by a guy like a faceless extra um he grabs her and like stops her from falling but then Gray gets mad that he's still holding on so you'll see that here in a second they're like playing and stuff and then she starts to move and she falls and someone grabs her and Gray gets super angry about it Like, he pulls her really fast, and he's wearing a smile, but his voice is really cold and, like, angry. So, yeah. He got mad. He got really mad. And then she's, like, blushing about it. She's like, oh, you really like me. <laughs> anyway, he tries to feed him some really crazy stuff that they say is purple. It looks kind of blue, but yeah. 
Um, it was definitely inedible, but Alice ate it anyway just to make him feel better. And then here's where the really scary stuff happens. So... Like, this is where she starts getting threatened by the Joker. And he starts luring her in using her dead sister. She doesn't remember that she's dead. Nightmare wiped it in the first game. But yeah, it's already after she got independent, left her family and everything, and then her sister got sick and died. That's in the truth end for that game. So Joker's using, like, her memories that aren't released to like torment her to try to get her to like lock herself into the prison and here's where you see the two jokers for the first time which she's really confused about she just doesn't understand here's where she tries to open the cages like the the gates for the bars and like finds out that none of the the keys work Joker and his counterpart kind of argue about this. You could tell he's not happy with the circus act performer one. He's like, no, I don't play these games. I'm not like you. I don't have that kind of bad taste. And he literally, like, disappears for most of the game. Like, he doesn't like it. Here's where, like, the captain is, like, taking over and, like, teasing her maliciously. Here's where she, like, literally finds out he's directing the other prisoners, but they're wearing, like, doll suits because he dehumanizes them. Like, this game is really dark. I'm just gonna tell you, it's really dark. I was surprised that it was R12. Here's some more. And these are, like, basically faceless extras that perform really evil deeds in Wonderland and got removed from the clock and, like, the situation and the game to like be forced to go into like this like limbo prison. I explain it better in like the actual game, so. And she gets really freaked out by it. Here's where he's starting to threaten her sister again to try to like threaten her. It gets really dark here. You'd see that he, like, actually, like, threatens it, and then the scene actually extends later. So he changes it to a knife because she doesn't like the guns in Wonderland, and so he, like, magically, like, changes it into a knife, and he's about to throw it, and then it changes to her waking up on this practice table about to be sawed in half for, like, a quote-unquote practice magic trick by these evil kids. So this is where we almost died. There was responsibility questions around here, and they almost killed us. So like, you can see them with their giant, like, cleaver and, like, the freaking knife. They're just evil. They're really, really evil. And then the Joker stops them, but he's still like, hey, well, maybe you should actually do this for the practice. So he was, like, threatening to let him go through with it. And then here he is. He's actually stepping on one of the doll suit prisoners, and he brought it out into the circus in that form. And she's, like, super disgusted and scared because she's like, what is he doing? Because he's stomping on it, and he, like, yeah, he does a bunch of really crazy, like, scary stuff at this point. Like, he just becomes really scary. And I liked him before this. Like, I thought he was cool, but yeah, this stuff is scary. And it explains, like, how sadistic he is. Here's where he's, like, still teasing, and the prison warden's over there on the left, like, just hating it. Because he doesn't do these games. He's like, can't you have, like, better taste, basically? And then Grey comes to save her. This is, like, the first time they battle it out. Here's where, like, it ends in a final battle. Or you think it's a final battle, but he just comes back. It plays for, like, another, like, ten hours. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, so she can see, like, reflected other worlds in these glass things that happen when it broke apart the prison the first time. And it just changes, like, all the time when she's looking at it. And Gray's like, hey, come with us, and he takes her back to the tower. This is, like, the first final battle that you have. It happens, like, three or four times, with different people coming to save her each time. And here she's treating him afterwards, our second shirtless Gray scene, sort of. She's, like, doing, like, medical application stuff for him. Even though it'll heal really fast, she's like, I can't, I can't allow that. And she's all sad. She's, like, reminiscing about the fact that, like, he almost died. If something happened to his clock, he would have died. And she wouldn't be able to see him, just like she couldn't see Julius in the last game. So she starts, like, treasuring him more and tells him to treasure himself. 
Here's where she's like, hey, my sister's still there because the prison revives. And he's waiting for her with this lure. Whoops. And then he does the unthinkable. Like, he does this to her sister. Like, he pulled it, the gun and everything, and, like, shot her. It was the extension of the earlier scene that you saw. And she, like, sees it all and she freaks out. But Nightmare's already interfered and started turning her sister's illusion into, like, snow, basically, to, like, erase the traces. So she stops feeling guilty. And you can see it here where it's turning into snow. And it continues and it shocks the Joker because he's like, no, you're not supposed to be able to interfere here. It was really crazy. I was pretty shocked when this happened. But the art is gorgeous. I was like, wow, this was amazing for the art. Julius comes to save her like the second time, basically. This time after the snow's already cleared. And he's just like, I'm not going to have it, even though he works in the same department. And the Joker's like, hey, I thought you were smarter than this, because nothing's going to happen if you save her. And Julius is just like, nope, bang, bang, bang. Like, he shoots him. Yup, he shoots him. Like, even while Alice is like, hey, you might get a penalty, he's just like, nope. Julius, like, didn't give it. Uh-uh. He was like, nope. He instantly protected her. I was really impressed by Julius in this game. I was impressed by Nightmare, too, because he saved her in the Dream World domain, and then Grey saved her in, like, the prison domain, and then Julius comes to pick her up. This is near the end of the game, though, so, like, you're on your way to the best end if you see all this. And Alice is just, like, thinking about it all. She's like, oh my gosh, no, I don't want Julius to dirty his hands. And then it actually shows you this stuff. I was like, wow, they don't normally show you this stuff. They'll talk about it in the visual novel, but they won't show you. So Julius closed his eyes after he did it to, like, make sure that it didn't, like, you know, get on him. And then he's like, don't look, Alice. Don't look. Because you can just forget it. And the Joker revives, obviously. Like, he's basically immortal. I explain it in translations, but yeah, shorthand version, he's basically immortal. He's not going to go anywhere. He just revives. And Julius knew this, but the only way to beat him was to, like, get rid of him that way. At least once. So he's like, I hope you don't, like take on the guilt and you just blame me if you have to and she's like no obviously not so this is where he's revived and he's talking to her right afterwards it cuts directly to the scene so you know that he's like literally revived immediately and she's like are you immortal and he just smiles and doesn't explain and then the circus kids are asking are we leaving and they're like yeah we're leaving finally the circus kids leave we get some really nice pictures of the Joker, though. I do still like the prison one, but not the, the circus captain. He's really sadistic. This is where, you know, he has some more jealousy events <laughs> with Julius because he gets angry. And he's, like, glaring at the fact that they're hanging out after all of this. And they both, like, kind of get mad at each other. This is where they go back to the art museum. This is what it looks like when you're in autumn and the art museum's playing. Like, she finds out that Gray's tattoo can detach and that he, like, feels the sensations and is able to, like, perceive things through it. And so, like, she starts playing around with it and stuff. She really thinks it's cute. He's just embarrassed. And you can see, like, the living art museum, like, all the pictures come alive and stuff. And it's all, like, autumn-themed in this game. This is where she starts seeing her sister again because the Joker tries to lure her away again. He's like, come here. And she's just like, no. And then the Joker's literally speaking through her sister. So she sees this. Her sister starts talking to her. And then suddenly she can see the Joker behind her. Like, basically, like, doing this. And then he covers her up and it disappears. And then he's gone completely. So she ends up at the doors, which, like, make a comeback. And Nightmare's like, well, you need to go through one of the doors. He, like, basically convinces her that one of these doors is strictly to his tower. And then he takes her hand and, like, drags her over there. Even though he's like, well, we'll let you go if you choose one. <laughs> he's like, but no, here's this one. So you should choose this one. And, like, basically tricks her into, like, you know, getting rid of the doors. By making her go through one finally, even though she was terrified of it. Because as long as she decides where it's going to go, it won't take her anywhere else. And she won't get, like, lured away again. Because you can only use them, I guess, once is the way he explained it. I don't know if that's the case, but he did explain it that way. So uh, when that happened, he convinced her to go through just that one door. And she ended up with Julius inside the Clover Tower, where they were all waiting for her. 
And um, she's talking with him about, like, possibly him having to leave, but he ends up staying, so it was pretty awesome in the best end. This is them afterwards where Gray finds out that she was hanging out with Julius right then, and he's still mad, so he, like, went out for a break, and she found him while he was doing this. He does not do that in front of her, like, smoke in front of her, out of respect. And then she's hanging out with him in his room, and she's got, like, his little lizard in her hand, and she starts playing with it, and but she gets, like too teasing towards him with it and remember he could feel it so like he gets like embarrassed about it so he gets jealous <laughs> jealous that she's putting too much love into his like you know separate ego or whatever anyway he pushes her down they kiss it kind of cuts there like after they have a conversation though and that's the end. That was the best end. It played the credits right then. So I encourage you guys to come check it out. Read it if you want. If you want to play the game, then you can using that. And uh, Nightmares videos. I also have the rest of Nightmares playthrough. Even though it didn't trigger any of this stuff, you can still use the beginning and then see what some of the death ends look like. Um, and also what happens if you like go and visit the Joker a lot. So that's what I did the last half of his game. Peace out. Bye. Uh, check out my Rumble, too. It's the same name as my second channel, Chibi Devil Chan. I'm moving my stuff there because I don't want to put it on YouTube anymore. Bye!